What's good, More Purpose family? It's your boy, Clans. We are back with another video. Today, we are talking about how your insecurities have become your idol. The reason why your insecurity has become an idol is because it's a list of things that God has asked you to do. But right now, your excuse only involves things that you feel like you don't have or based off the fear of what you don't think you, you can do. Then the problem is we're looking at what God has called us to do and a perspective of doing it without God's hand on our lives. But we don't realize that if God calls to do it, I mean, he's gonna be there every step of the way. He's just relying on us to take that step of faith and doing what he has told us to do. Why are you still sitting when God has told you to stand up and walk? Your insecurity is why you're walking in disobedience. God has called you to do something specifically. He told you to get on camera, but you don't want to get on camera because you feel like you don't look the part. He told you to speak, because you, but you feel like you don't speak good, so you're not doing it. And that's our problem. We're not walking in obedience because we're so busy putting insecurities over God's voice. So with me, I had to really dig deep down and patiently believe and realize, God, you're calling me to do something that I'm not comfortable with. You're calling me to public speak in a situation where I don't like speaking at all. And the reason behind me not wanting to speak is because I got joked for fumbling on a public stage full of thousands of people where I forgot my lines for a certain uh, business pitch that we was doing with my friends. I forgot my lines in front of thousands of people, a thousand people had something in the water, for those that know what that is. And in that aspect, I never wanted to be on stage again. I never wanted to be on stage again because I feel like my problem with public speaking, my nervousness, my lack of confidence, my lack of preparation, all had an effect on why I couldn't execute on that stage to speak the way I wanted to speak. And with that, that one L, that one situation, let me never to want to speak again. Never want to be on camera again. Never want to be in front of nobody again. And I never want nobody to ask me no questions that I wasn't fully prepared for because I would get nervous, I'll get high flashes, I would start sweating, I would start stuttering, stumbling over my words, all that. You can ask my friends, bro, we came a long way, I'm not gonna lie, we came a long way. But when God, when God gave me the dream, mind y'all, I know God's voice. So when God gave me the dream and said, Clarence, you might be my ambassador. I need you to start doing Bible studies with your friends. I need you to start doing the podcast. These are both different things I never really wanted to do. Which is why I knew it was God because it won't, meet, it won't Clarence say he wouldn't do that. I want to go make money. <laughs> I want to go make money. So anything else that you call me to do, especially if I don't think it's making no money, I don't want to do it. So what's that? So with me, when God told me to do those things, I had to really sit down and be like, all right, okay, cool. God, you know I don't like public speaking. God, you know I fumbled last time you act, I, I had to speak on the public stage. I don't feel comfortable doing this. I had to also realize that in my fear of public speaking, in my trauma of fumbling on a stage, I had to realize that God's voice is bigger. It's a, it's a um, thing in VeggieTales that Junior says, for those that, that watch VeggieTales, you're OG. But Junior had a song, I think it was with David and Goliath, and he was saying that he's big, but God's bigger. And ever since I heard that, that was my confidence of knowing that with anything in life, whatever God's called you to do, no matter what your trauma is, whatever, no matter what your insecurities are, your fear, whatever it is, God's bigger than it all. He, he's, he's, bigger, he's bigger than all of it. God is bigger than every insecurity. God is bigger than every trauma. God is bigger than every fear that you may have, whatever it is. And it's up to us to believe that though. And I think that's our problem. We believe more in our fears. We believe more in what man has to say about us versus what God is actually saying, versus what God actually, how God actually views us, how God actually feels about us, and what God actually wants us to do. So for us, I need us to step, stand out and actually what we need to do. So fast forward, right? When God first gave me the dream of being an ambassador, walking in for Christ and everything, right? I had to realize that my fear does not define me. My, my trauma doesn't define me. My insecurities don't define me because God is the only one that, define me, that, that can define me. And for us, we have to realize, and for us, we won't know who we are until we know who God is. And that's really like, we won't know who we are until we know who God is. And that's really the biggest thing because I had to learn for myself, all right, bet, let me go read this word. Because if I'm saying I have a fear, if I'm putting this fear over what God has actually called me to do and I start walking in disobedience, that means I have now made this fear an idol. I made this insecurity. I feel like this, my lack of articulation in my speech is now insecurity. It's so big that it's bigger than God's voice. And we can't let that happen. Prime example, y'all. Y'all ready? Let's get into it. Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 to 12. 
But Moses pleaded with the Lord, Oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Uh, verse 11. This way, this way the Lord ate him up. This way the Lord caught him. And he got me too. Then the Lord asked, bro, verse 11. Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? What? What, bro? Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Are you kidding me? That's good. Who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak? Hear or do not hear? See or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Verse 12, now go, I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. If the Lord said this to Moses, what more is he saying to us? I don't, I don't look the part. Who made you in the first place? Who created you? <laughs> I can't speak, who made your mouth? The, the word speak for itself, bro. And this, this is what I really wanted to get at, bro, because I, I have the Every Man's Bible for those that want to copy this Bible. And the commentary, it says, for verse 10 through 12, it says, Moses may have had a speech impediment, but that wasn't a legitimate excuse for not following God's plan. He didn't have an accurate perception of who he could become with God's help. While Moses was engaging in, in a kind of self-examination, he was doing so with a negative, fearful attitude. He was not yet willing to be changed by God. Who they talking? Our weaknesses should never be an excuse to avoid spiritual renewal. Like this is OD, bro. I'm not gonna count y'all. With God's help, anything is possible. We need to realize that God can capitalize on our strengths, helping us reach our full potential. The word gonna word every time. That living word is gonna word every time. The problem is we don't want to change. Let me drink this alani, man. The problem is that we don't want to change. And I feel like the reason why we don't want to change is because we're too busy living in comfort of, a, of what we already are. Not realizing that change requires us to be uncomfortable. And spiritual renewal also requires us to be uncomfortable because we have to let go of the old nature. The reason why we let our insecurities overpower us, or not overpower us, the reason why we let our insecurities overpower God's word is because we don't believe that God's word is bigger than our insecurities. And the reason why is because we always get this excuse, right? That's always been me. That, that, that's the biggest excuse. Oh, that's just me. Oh, I just talk like oh, I just talk like that. I've always talked like that. I've always said that. I've always been like this. I've always acted this way. Not realizing that this is the way you acted before you knew Christ. So when God's calling you to do something, He's talking to you in the aspect of you knowing who He is now. Knowing what He can do now. And we had that mindset of knowing what God can do now. There's no excuse for us to be walking in disobedience over insecurity, over fear. But in reality, God is bigger than all these things. And that's why I really want to get at, bro. I really want to get into that aspect because imagine what could be behind your yes. Imagine how many people can, imagine how many more lives can be impacted. Imagine how many more souls can be saved if you just said yes. If you walked in obedience. If you really walked in the life. If you really walked in the calling that God has called you to. All you have to do is answer the phone. I, I know it's scary. I know that you're terrified in a way or you feel like your insecurity is going to get the best of you. You feel like you're not qualified enough. You feel like you're not a, basically the man for the job. But in reality, you have to realize that, bro, if God's calling you to do that, that's an honor, bro. Like, it's really a blessing to be called by God. It's a blessing to basically have God want to choose you. to trust, Bro, to have God trust you with such a such an assignment, bro. You know what kind of, you know how, to, you like, do you really know how he looks at you, bro? For God to trust you with that type of assignment, for God to want you to do something for him, that means he trusts you in such a way that he can, he can trust you with his kids. He can trust you with his works. He can trust you with, to steward what he's asking you to do. But a lot of us will basically pass up on the gift of what he's asking us to do. Or pass up on the responsibility of being employees for God. You'd rather be an employee for a man than be an employee for the person that created a man, bro. Like, I, I don't understand. I never, I never understand it. I never understand it, bro. It's crazy. I really want us to realize that the best way to be changed is by knowing God's word. And we're so caught up in being, we're, <laughs> whoo, we're so caught up in not wanting to change and not want to be um, uncomfortable that we're not realizing that we're interchangeable. God can switch you out in a heartbeat if you really want to, but he's calling you to do something. He's calling you to be the one he wants to use for his assignment specifically. Imagine, like real talk, because all the glory to God for everything that he's been able to do through me and Marlon and more purpose and our more purpose family, our community, everything that he's done. All the followers and everything don't matter. 
Imagine what would happen if I personally didn't say yes. If I didn't say yes, we wouldn't be having Bible studies. If I ain't walking in obedience, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now as far as a podcast and walking in obedience and just like situation where bro said he watched our stuff and he said, keep doing what y'all doing. I love y'all stuff and everything. Just little stuff like that. Imagine where we would be if I wasn't doing none of that, bro. Like, if I wasn't doing no- nothing that God has called me to do, imagine where we would actually be at. And that's crazy to really think about. Like, that's actually OD. Really OD, bro. Imagine if you never say yes. Imagine the lives that are impacted. Imagine how many people are waiting on your yes so they can say yes. I want us to have the mindset of, all right, cool. If guys give me something to do, that could, that could be you getting prophesied to, that could be um, you having your own personal dream. Whatever God's calling you to do, I don't want you to walk around having the fear of doing it because you feel inadequate or you feel, or you realize you're taking on the aspects of man versus actually hearing what God's calling you to do and who he has made you to be. So with that, we have to do better at that. We have to understand that like, yo, God made you the way you are for a reason. He made you perfectly imperfect. He made you just the way you are, one of one. He made you one of one. And when you start walking in that, and you start walking in that confidence, you start walking in the confidence of God made me in his image. There's nothing nobody, no man can tell you, no woman can tell you of what you can't do because God called you to do it. He made you who you are. He gave you that confirmation. You prayed that prayer. He came through on it. God's track record with you is he's undefeated. He's undefeated. So he prayed, you prayed that prayer. He came through. And sometimes he didn't come through, but he was protecting you from something else. The best thing my dad has ever told me was, one, me plus God equals the majority every time. Me being on God's team is going to be the majority every time. So you know what that means? That means you can't lose. And God's calling you to do something, that means he's with you in everything that he's calling you to do. And if he's with you with everything that he's calling you to do, that means you are going, you, you have the majority, majority rules. You're in the winning, you're on the winning team. And there's nothing that nobody or nothing that the devil can do to stop what you have going on unless you believe his lies, unless you believe in what your insecurities are telling you that you can do. But when you start believing in what God has called you to do and listening to truth, when you start believing in truth of what God has called you to do and what he has spoke over your life, it's gonna be a complete difference of how you view yourself, how you view his assignments that he's called you to do, how you um, just wanna move forward in general, bro. Cause with me, like I never wanted to do podcasts, I never wanted to do YouTube. I always wanted to do YouTube, but not in this way. And I never wanted to um, just public speak in general in different scenarios or different stages and all those things like that. But God has graced, graced me enough and my brother enough to do so in a very public manner where there's a lot of responsibility in what we're doing. But I also realize this power in our yes and lives are being changed, lives are being impacted in a positive way. And we're seeing the fruit of that as well by just walking in obedience. And I realized that walking in obedience and listening to God's voice is way better than listening to my own voice. It's way better than trying to do what I want to do. When the whole time God knows exactly the best path for me. I don't know what, I don't know the best path for me. I promise you I don't. I like I feel like we always like to think that we know what's best for us, but in reality, God knows what's best for me. I, I can't know what's best for me unless I know who God is and I have an ear to hear what he's trying me to say. So I hope y'all get blessed by this, bro. I hope God, I hope y'all hear God's voice and not my own, bro. Cause God been hurt my heart to make this video, bro, because a lot of us really struggle with insecurities, doubt, fear, anxiety, whatever it is, trauma. And I want you to realize that no matter how damaged you think you are, no matter what the trauma, trauma is, no matter what insecurities you feel like you may have, no matter what fears you may have, God can still use you, the value is still in you, and God chose you, simple as that. And he chose you for a reason because you're one of one, you're, you're uniquely you. So walk in that, walk boldly in that and find confidence in it. And when you find that confidence in God and identity in Christ, a boy is gonna get scary. It's gonna get scary. So think about it. Going back to Moses and everything. If Moses never said yes to God, if Moses never followed suit with what God had called him to do to free the Israelites, where would the Israelites be right now? It took one person, it took one man's yes to get hundreds of other yeses. Who is called to your yes? That is good. Jesus Christ, that's good. That is good. I want y'all really think about it, bro. Like, imagine, imagine how much. Imagine the smile God has on, your, on his. Imagine the smile that God has on his face, man. When you put his voice over your own personal fears.
when you put his voice over man's voice. When you put his voice over your friend's opinions. Imagine how God looks at you when you tell your friends, all, everything what y'all saying right now is cool and everything, but God told me to do this, so I'm gonna do this instead. I'm gonna do what God told me to do. I'm gonna get back with y'all and let y'all know what happens. You know what I'm saying? Like imagine what God, how God looks at you when you start putting value in his word. When you start putting value in what he has to say about you and what he thinks about you. When you start, when you start telling yourself that you're beautiful. When you start walking in the identity of what Christ has given you and not what man has given you. When you start seeing that you're wonderfully and beautifully made. When you start telling people that you're made in his image and not man's, bro. Let me tell you something. When you start telling people that you're made in his image and not no one else's, bro. You're going to watch. The confidence is going to be different. The impact is going to be different. And it's people that's going to follow you and walk in their boldness and walk in their confidence and walk in their yes, out for your yes. So who is called to your yes? We have to realize that, bro. We have to realize that our yes is not about us. It's more so about the people that's attached to our yes. The only thing you have to do is say yes. Let God use you, bro. Stop playing. Stop playing with that man, bro. Like let God, let God use you, bro. You're playing with him. You're hindering. You're hindering yourself. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. You have to walk boldly in the calling. You have. You have to. If I don't say yes, I'm hindering someone else's yes. So real question is, right? The real question is, in my opinion, who is attached to your yes? Who is waiting on you to say yes so they can say yes to? It's our job to live a life worthy of our calling. It's our job to reflect God in the right way. It's our job to be Christ ambassadors. ambassadors and it's our job to be Christ representatives. And for me to represent Christ, most times, the best way to represent Christ is through your lifestyle and it's through your yes. It's through you walking in obedience. Who's attached to your yes? And how many more souls can be saved by you walking in obedience? Y'all be safe, man. Love. And we're going to get out of here.